Welcome back to Hackdoor. In this video, we'll explore multiple approaches to solve a proper lead code problem, long as polynomial substring. We'll begin with a brute force approach and gradually optimize it until we reach the efficient O of n square solution using dynamic programming and expand around its center technique. Let's dive in. So what is the question, guys? It's pretty straightforward, right? Long as polynomial substring. This is a standard question, okay? So problem statement is given a string S, written the longest palindromic substring. So here they're given that a string is a palindrome if it reads the same forward and backward. So it's a basic definition of the palindrome, right? So this is uh, the string given in example one. So here uh, the longest palindrome substring it has is BAB. So ABA is also a valid answer. So basically they don't care about what you written, but they care about the length of the longest palindrome substring. That's a basic idea of, from this example we can get it. And then in example two, what we have is C, B, B, D. So here, uh, only one palindrome is there, that is B, B. So here, what are the constraints? S length is in the inclusive range of 1 to 1000. S consists of only digits and English letters. Cool. So this is a pretty standard question. I personally face this exact question in coding test conducted by a well-known product-based company. I will explain to you in a way that you will never forget this and remember all three approaches. This is the boilerplate code given. So basically what it means like we take the string and return a string. So what string we return? We return the longest palindrome substring. So guys, what is the idea here? Firstly, you should be aware of a substring. So what is substring? Let's say this string B A B A D. So what are possible substrings for this? So string itself is a substring of itself and uh, we have the substrings of length one. This is length one substrings. Each is a substring, okay, here. And other possibilities. What are other possibilities? So here, substrings of length two. This is BA is substring of length two, and AB is another one, and BA is another one, and AD is another one. So these are length two substrings. What are length three substrings? BAB, ABA, and BAD. So basically, we have to take like sequentially. We can't skip any character in between. If we skip the character, that is a subsequence. So here, what is the subsequence? Here, we can say that B, B, D is a subsequence. Basically, we can skip the characters, but we have to maintain the order it is. And I'm coming back to here. So here, what is the four length substring we have? B, A, B, A, and A, B, A, D. Next, five length substring is the string itself. B, A, B, A, D. So the question asks us to iterate over all of this and then find the maximum possible longest palindromic substring. In that case, we'll find this is the longest palindromic substring and this is also. So that's what they written in the answer. So they said that like BAB or like ABA also valid answer. You got the idea, right? So an example two also is the same case. So if we uh, get all the possible substrings, we get only see that like BB is the only longest palindrome substring. So firstly, brute force approach guys. So it's very simple. So first step is to write a helper function is palindrome and this checks if a given substring is palindrome or not. So to decide if it's a palindromic or not, we have to be having some function, right? That's what we're doing here. That's all. It's a basic thing. And then we check all possible substrings from the given input string. So this is function alone. We haven't invoked it yet. And then second step, what we're doing, we're just finding this, like all the substring, we did manual, right? Just need to do this in code. That's all. And third thing is like, if a substring is palindrome and is longer than the current longest palindrome, we update the result. So we don't need to update the result if it is the same length. We can update the result if it is a longer than the current palindrome. You got the idea, right guys? It's very simple. So it's all what we discussed only. Now let's look into the code. So here code. So basically to define if it's palindrome or not, we have to check it's like we have to make the string read uh, frontward and backward and see both read same. That's what we written here. This is a standard thing in Python. So here we're doing a check if string is read forward and backward the same. So here, uh, this is one of the method, but this is not optimized to check if it's a palindrome or not because this creates a new string each time. So that is O of n space complexity. Your interviewer might not want to do this. So you have to do this using the pointers. So how do we do this using a pointers? So basically we need to check if the first character matches the last character. That's what we need to check using the pointers. So we define our pointers to be extremes left and right. So we have to be like, take this case, like the left here starts with zero and the right starts at so we have to keep checking if left is close to right and we have to do it till left less than right. So if any time left character not equal to right character, then we return false guys because it's not a palindrome. Of course, you don't need to process further, right? That's all simple. You know, right? After this character is done, we should not process this again. So that's why we do the left plus one and this also same right minus one. We have to shrink our boundaries, right? That's what like till left less than right only we should do. 
and then we are uh, changing this each iteration. So at the end we return true because if it's not a parallel domain, it have been written here. At the end we should return true. Simple. And then yeah, this we define our basic function to check if it's a parallel domain or not. Now our step two guys, we iterate to all the substrings. Okay, our step three goes here only. Here if we are checking if the length of the current uh, substring palindrome is greater than the longest palindrome discord so far. Okay, so how we are finding all the substrings? So we have seen the substring like uh, string, uh, each character itself is a substring. So that's why we have to go through the two loops to check if i to j. So uh, j can equal to i as well because like we saw right like here it's like a single even character itself is a substring. So here we starting i from 0 and it goes till length of s minus 1 because this range is whatever we provided the exclusive right. So in the same thing goes for j and in that for loop we start it at i because each character itself can be a substring and then this also goes till length of s minus 1 that's why you specify length of s. After that we, we got this range right now we have to form the substring. This substring should include the current character in j that's why we are doing i to j plus 1. If we want to exclude the j, then we can specify i is to j, that's all. So here we want a j to be in our substring. That's why we're doing the j plus 1, guys. After that, like uh, we got a substring. Now what we need to do, only thing left is we have to check if it's a palindrome or not. So we just pass it to our function. So we are using this function uh, and then this function we're not using because it's not efficient. I discussed, right? The space efficient is this one only. If it is a palindrome, then we get true here. True and then we have another condition also. So here we are checking if the length of this sub. So basically this substring is greater than the longest palindrome. So in that case only we update the longest palindrome to sub. Since like we don't need to update this every time we have to have this check because like uh, they doesn't matter right we can return any of the longest palindrome substring. They don't check if it is exact match. See here BAB and ABA. So these two are valid answers. So that's why we don't want to do that redundant replacements. So we only do only when the longest palindrome discovered so far is less than the current longest palindrome which is a substring in place. So at the end we return the longest palindrome. So guys, what is the time complex here? It's O of n cube. So how do we say that? So here we use the rational for loop. So that is like we have in outer for loop it's n, in inner for loop it's going for n and within the for loop we have this step. So this step it would be like we will be slicing the string up to n like this would iterate the n characters. So here it's n plus and then we have the step here is palindrome. So this is also doing this n times right like basically we have to iterate each character and string is of length n so it is n. So now it is like n square into 2n. So it is like 2n cube. So we ignore this constant and it is n cube. So what is the space complexity now? It's O of 1 only, right? We're just using the pointers here and then we're not using any extra space. So if we had used this, then it would be O of n. So now it is O of 1 because we don't use any other extra space. So guys, I got the code ready. Let's try running this. So it is accepted solution for these two cases. Let's try submitting this. You will find its time limit exceeded. The reason I will tell you later. See, the time limit is exceeded. This is because a computer can perform only 10 power 8 operation per second. But here the length of the string is 10 cube. So 10 cube or complexity here is n cube. So 10 to the power of 3 power 3. It is 10 to the power of 9. 10 to the power of 9 operations are exceeding our 10 to the power of 8 operations. So that's why we have to get this complexity reduced to n square. Then it would be 10 power 6 operation per second. Then can execute happily without any time limit exceeded. So how do we optimize this? Let's look into that. So guys, how can we optimize this? So here, uh, if you look closely, we are doing the check of palindrome again and again. It's like we are solving that as a sub problem. So basically here ABA is sub problem for us. It's a substring which we check is it's a palindrome or not. So for bigger substring like BABAD, we can just utilize the same thing and then just check if these two characters matches. Then we don't need to compute for this length again. So we save our time right here. We are saving it by O of 3 characters. So that would be a significant impact when we go for a longer strings like we just saw the time limit exceeded right. So for example here this is the string given. So for this longer string the time limit would be exceeded like here if we check for the substring then uh, we can use for the like bigger substring right. That's what the idea is. So I hope you know where I am pointing to. Our dynamic programming guys. Dynamic programming is what like if we, we don't need to solve our sub problems again and again. So we store the result we computed for the sub problems. So here sub problem is what finding if the substring is a palindrome. So we apply that to the bigger substring. We store this result and then we apply that to the bigger substring. Basically we are reusing the results which we computed earlier so that it would save us time. 
we are not iterating the things again and again so guys you got the idea right it's basic thing so here c let's take the string cbbd so we want to know uh, like we uh, for the longer substring like let's say we compute like bb the palindrome and then for checking like the substring of length 4 we want to see if just like these two characters are matching these two are a palindrome then we can apply the same to this whole thing right we don't need to compute over this again so how do we do this so basically we need to have this computation stored so uh, we need to know like if i to j length is a palindrome or not so for that like how can we know that how can we store that so we have to be using the two dimensional array to represent this like whole string so let me take the example here so this is our four cross four matrix because like four cross four why because we have this string as a length four so let's have this indexes here zero one two three for this index like this is the character right cbbd so if we need to see if each thing is a palindrome we can just utilize this one so here initially we'll fill it with all zeros but uh, let's not do that as example so here we can just say for zero can indicate that it's not a palindrome and one can indicate it's a palindrome so any cell in this grid should say that let's name it dp of ij so any cell in this grid should say that if i to j substring is a palindrome or not so we can utilize this result further so i what is i to j here so from a substring point of view i can be starting from zero and j itself can start from i so firstly we to have to check for all the single characters and then we can check for two characters this is a length one substring length two substring length three substring so we know that each character is a substring of the string and then each character itself is a palindrome because from the starting and ending it's read same because we only have one character guys so for that matter so let's indicate all this dp of ij so i is equals to j we can indicate that it is a substring is palindrome right so for that we can just say one so i is equals to j cases guys all these cases because like if you take the each character like c Let's say we take C. C is a palindrome by itself, and then B is also a palindrome by itself. Similarly for other B and D. So now we're done with length one substrings. How about going to length two substrings? We just need to check if both characters are same. So we have to check like uh, length two substring in the sense like how what we'll get. So C B B D right. So what is the indexes we get? So we'll get like indexes like this. Let's take indexes reference here. So what are indexes we have? Zero one, and then one two. 2, 3. These are all length through substrings. So for that, we have to fill the cells here. Each cell should say if it is a palindrome or not. So here, 0 to 1. So what is 0 to 1? CB. So CB is not a palindrome by itself because we don't have these two matching. So we can fill 0. Next is DB. DB is a palindrome because two characters match. Next is BD. So these two are not a palindrome. So it is a 0. So now we have to check for the substrings of length 3. So what are the indices we get? 0, 1, 2 and then 1, 2, 3. Okay, for this case, uh, if we have this check already, like we, we check this is a palindrome or not, so we can utilize the same thing for getting if it is a palindrome or not for a longer substring. So for checking a substring of length 3, we can just reuse our methods we computed for length 1. So here we need to check if B is a palindrome by itself before concluding this one is a palindrome we just uh, for this iteration we just check cb or same or not and then we use the result computed in the previous iteration okay so cb or not same so obviously it is not a palindrome we keep it zero now we have b b d so b not equal to d obviously so it's a zero it's not a palindrome guys so here c and d so these two are not same it is not a palindrome so we keep it zero so what is the maximum palindrome we have only bb here if you observe so this is of length 2 that's all here answer is bb and let's take a palindrome case of cbbc you'll get the idea here most same thing here so now also we have to do the same thing firstly we fill all the i is equal to j cases that's a palindrome by itself now after this it's the same case for length 2 so CB is a not palindrome, so it's zero. BB is a palindrome, it's one. So BC is not a palindrome, it's zero. So now here we have CBB case. Here C is not equal to B, it's not a palindrome. So zero to two, uh, we can keep it zero. So here for the substring of now, 
1 2 3 so for this also b is not equal to c so it's not a palindrome we keep it zero so guys this is the important step so here we have c b b c now c is equals to c right these two characters match for this iteration so we can reuse the results computed in the previous iterations that means to say that for length 4 we can just check like we already checked for two characters so we need to check for another two characters for that we can reuse this result which we computed for one and two so uh, this is a cell like what are the coordinates for coordinates are like 0 and 3 there because this is a 0 row and third column here and then for this we checked already if like uh, this one c is equals to c so we checked if s of 0 is equals to s of 3 and another thing what we need to do we don't need to compute for a whole string because we just discussed it we just need to check the string the substring between 1 to 2 is a palindrome or not you know right this range in our dp array can be represented using dp of 1 2 so here what is 1 2 this is like 1 2 so here this is 1 so this is 1 means in the sense it's a palindrome so here we got the palindrome guys so congrats we got the palindrome of length 4 which is of greatest length here so it's the longest palindrome substring you got the formula right so for dp of ij if to conclude if it's a palindrome or not we need to check two cases i and j here so we need to check if uh, s of i is equal to s of j okay and what we can check here we just discussed right this for index 0 to 3 here so for that index we check like uh, 0 plus 1 here so what we did like dp of we just translating into our uh, dp array here so dp of i plus 1 because like for 0 we use the uh, next row okay and then this is column right we just use the previous column and j minus 1 that's the formula guys we use the same thing in our code very simple so guys let's go to the steps required for our code first step we know that each single character is a palindrome so insulate the diagonal dp is equal to true here i'm using the booleans true or false we can also use 0 or 1 basically it's up to us guys so here next step is to check for the two character palindromes that's what we just did so two character palindrome is obvious right dp of i and i i plus one so we know right basically a dp of i zero represents like what till that extent it is a palindromic substring or not here j is equal to i plus one in the sense it is a two character substring that's all guys we check for this because basically we check if s of i is equal to s of j for these cases and then uh, we put that zero or one or two or false in that cells we fill that cells so and then for longer substrings we check if outer characters match and inner substring is a palindrome we know right we just discussed this and then we update the longest palindrome found in each iteration simple guys we just discussed this and then we want to code this very simple here in the code firstly we're getting the length of string and so we're getting on n and then using the list comprehension approach so we're filling every cell with false here after that we initialize the longest palindrome variable to empty string so first step we know right every single character is a palindrome so we just fill this dp array so dp of i is equal to true and then we know the longest palindrome is equal to s so we can fill it like uh, we don't even want to have this here we can have it in such s of zero here so here they mentioned that the string always is a length one in the best case and the worst case it will go up to thousand so in that case we can have this longest palindrome is dp of zero and we don't want to do that here i just kept this because uh, you will be knowing what pattern we are following while coding and then we check for the two character palindromes so for two character palindrome also we're doing the same thing so for i in range n minus 1 so why n minus 1 because it's a two character substring so we should stop at n minus 2 step only so let's say like c b b d so our i should stop at here at this point so this is what 0 1 2 3 if you take the length of string here it's 4 so here where should our i stop i should stop at 2 so that's why we kept it like what n minus 1 so this is 3 which is exclusive range for range function so that's why uh, it will generate range only up to 0 to 2 and here we are checking if s of i equals to i plus 1 so basically we are comparing subsequent characters each time that's all and then if both matches are both equal then we mark dp of i i plus 1 true so here same step we followed longest palindrome is equals to s of i i plus 2 why i plus 2 here because we want our i plus 1 character to be included and this is a exclusive right so that's why we keep i plus 2 so it would have i plus 1 included so we are just including that character in our longest palindrome next step is to check palindromes of length 3 or more so basically this is the standard case right and see guys here we are using the length here so basically we are iterating over the length so length starts from 3 since we are interested in length 3 or more we start our length from 3 here so length is in the range of 3 to n plus 1 why n plus 1 because length 
should go till n guys it's a length we are iterating over length not the index so n plus 1 ensures that length would be completely iterated so the it means that we will iterate till length 4 for this string that's why we kept this n plus 1 this is very important okay and then what we are doing for i in range n minus length plus 1 so basically i should be only having till n minus length plus 1 why so let's take example here c b b b and d so here we can check with the length of 3 so this is one set and this is one other set so what is the maximum value for i it can go till this index so so what is index here let me just score the indexes here so here uh, i can go till i is goes to 2 only so uh, what we are doing here is n minus length plus 1 n is here what 5 so here we are checking for the length of 3 so 3 plus 1 so that means that like 5 minus 3 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 so the range which it forms is 0 to 2 only inclusive range so i is at 2 at the max so we got the idea right why we kept this n minus length plus 1 and then we want our j to be i plus length minus 1 because why we have to be comparing till that length so for this substring where should be our j to find the length of 3 it should be here so when i is at 0 the j should be at 2 so how can we get this from our length and i so we have to derive this from our i plus length right so that's why uh, j is equals to i plus length so and then if you do i plus length where it would go it would go to 3 but our j should end at 2 only that's why we do minus 1 it is 2 now so j would be at 0 to 2 so that's why we're doing this j is equals to i plus length minus 1 you got the idea right it's very simple guys but like you just need to observe it we know why we are doing right so basically we need to check if the uh, characters at the both ends are match and then here we using the pre-computed results for the lower substring length this we know we derived the formula here right the same applies here so it's not a new to us so we're just uh, doing this dp of i is equal to true because like these two holds two then it is true here the longest value will be replaced with i to j plus one because j should be included we keeping it j plus one so at the end we just written the longest value guys that's all so what is the time complexity here it's obviously o of n square because we're using the natural for loop and then the space complexity is here n cross n so basically we are forming this dpr right so that's why it's of n cross n that is n n square here i got the code ready here let me try running it so yeah it is accepted solution for two test cases let me try submitting this cool guys it is accepted solution for all the test cases so guys let's go to another approach so in the previous approach we saw our time complex is o of n square the space complex is o of n square here we can reduce the space complex using this approach so here we don't use that dp array so how do we solve this so basically here we define a helper function expand around the center this expands outward from the center to check for the palindrome so instead of checking from the extremes we can expand from the center as well right for the palindrome so let's take for the case so if it is a string of like uh, here is like race car so, so here we can expand on the center right and then check if it's a palindrome or not it's not that we always have to check from the extremes we can check from center as well so for that we just define one uh, function to expand around the centers next thing is for each actor in the string we expand for both odd length and even length palindromes so let's say we take c a a c so here we have two centers a and a so for this matter we have to expand over odd length and even length so for odd length the center remains same i comma i so for even length the center is what i let's say this is i the center would another center would be i plus one so that's the concept guys here so after that we update the longest palindrome found using the expansion so while this expansion we will find the palindrome and then we just update it so very easy approach guys so let's go to the code so this is the same approach guys basically what we are checking we just checking from the center so firstly we just uh, define some utility function so this takes left and right basically this is the uh, left and right in the sense like the center only for the odd length uh, left and right same that is i and i for the even length the left and right would be i and i plus one and also how many centers would be having 2 and minus one so how do we have this 2 and minus one because for uh, odd length each uh, like uh, each character itself can be a center so we can have n centers for that and for even length we should have at least two centers right so that's why it's n minus one so uh, we have 2 and minus one this is the uh, total number of centers we have what we are doing here while left greater than or equal to 0 we just expand from the center right so we should ensure that always our left greater than or equal to 0 and right should be less than the length of the string we can't go further right because it, it would give our index out of the bound exceptions and then if s of left is equal to s of right 
So that means that uh, both character matching at the left and the right while expansion. In this case, it's a palindrome. So we're finding the length of the current palindrome. So length can be found using the indexes, right? That is right minus left plus one. So this could be a length. And then if it is greater than the current longest palindrome, then we replace our longest palindrome with the current one. So we want it from left to right inclusive. That's why we keep plus one. So after that, we just update our pointers. See here left minus one because we're going like this direction for left. So left should be decremented. And for right, it would be incremented, right? Because right would be proceeding like this forward. So yeah, that's all. And then at the end, we just sit in the longest palindrome. This is our utility function. So one part is done, guys. So next part is to just call this utility function for our odd length and even length. Have this initialized to this of zero. Why? Because like uh, for base case, like if it's a, a string of length one, we could have this palindrome here only. So instead of inserting to empty string, I had it inside to S of zero because they mentioned here, right? In the best case, it's always at one. And then in the worst case, it would be thousand. So I have it initialized to S of zero here. And a quick heads up guys, if it's a length one, we can just return directly here the S of zero only. Okay. So, and then we just iterating here in the range for uh, length of string. So for this, firstly, we are finding the odd length palindromes. So odd palindrome is close to expand around the centers, I comma I. So you know, right, why we pass I and I because each thing can be a center for an odd palindrome. So that's why we pass our I comma I to our helper function. And then this would give us palindrome. So we're checking our length of the odd palindrome is greater than the longest palindrome we have, right? If it is greater, then only we replace. Same for the event palindrome. So for the event palindrome, expand on centers, like the center would be I and I plus one. We just discussed here, right? Here also we're comparing the length, event palindrome greater than the longest palindrome, discussed so far. If else we replace. At the end, we just read the longest palindrome. So that's simple guys, you got it, right? So what is the time complex here? O of n square, because uh, this is a for loop and inside the for loop, we have this expand on the center. This could go up to n. Basically, uh, the uh, we're iterating each character one side here in this one. So that's why it is n in n, it is n square. And then the space complex is O of one. We don't use any extra space. So this is optimized approach, guys. So I got the code ready. Let me try running this. So yeah, this accept solution. And also here, uh, as we discussed, we can have a check if length of string is equals to one. We can just return our longest value well here we have because it's S of zero only, right? Because it's obviously the range is from one to thousand. If it is one only, we don't need to further operations here. So that's why we just return it here. So I'm just separating this. So yeah, it reads 43% and it's accept solution. Congrats guys, you just learned it. I hope you never forget these three approaches on this very standard question. So practice this and then if you have any doubts, put in comments. And that's a wrap on solving the longest palindrome substring problem using three different approaches. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like the video, comment your thoughts and subscribe to Hackcode for more insightful coding tutorials. Let's keep mastering these coding challenges together and see you on the next one.